Welcome back to another EagloCraft modding tutorial, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to add your own custom items into EagloCraft. So, let's go. First of all, I'm back in the EagloCraft workspace that we made last time using IntelliJ, and let's get started by first adding our textures. I'm going to create a texture real quick using one of my favorite programs, which is called Pixel Art, but with an I instead of an E. All textures in Minecraft are 16 by 16, at least for items and blocks, so let's start with that. For this, I've made a really bad but workable ruby texture, and I'm just going to export this and we'll use that. To add this in, we're going to go to our desktop runtime, resources, assets, Minecraft, textures, then the items folder, and paste in our gemstone. After this, we're going to want to go back to the Minecraft folder, then go to Models, Item, and find any item you want to copy. You're going to copy whatever item you want the positions to look like, not the texture, when you hold it in your hand. For this, I'm going to copy an emerald, as it's pretty close. Name this file the same thing you named your texture, so I'm going to call it a gemstone. I recommend Notepad++ for opening these files up, and once you open it up, you'll notice that for our layer 0 texture, we currently have it as the emerald, so let's change that to our gemstone. Saving the file, and we can close out of this, and back to our code. When you're using IntelliJ, a good shortcut is clicking shift twice, which will allow you to type in any class or file, and just jump right to it. For this, we're going to need item in net minecraft item. We're going to need render item in net minecraft client renderer entity. And finally, we're going to need items. First things first, let's make the item actually exist in the system by going to the item class and scrolling down until you see all of our glorious items. This might take a bit of scrolling, but you'll notice all of these register item block, and finally, register item. There's a lot of different classes you can use for each one. For example, item axe, item pickaxe, item spade. But for our gemstone, we're just going to want to search for the emerald, which just uses item itself. And let's just copy that as an example. Let's scroll down to the bottom and let's add this before all the music discs that use ID2000. But right here after the doors, let's paste in our little snippet, change the ID to the next one, so 432. Let's delete this little space. And edit our properties of it. So emerald turns to gemstone. This unlocalized name emerald turns to gemstone, but you will notice that in the future, this unlocalized name is not the same as the regular name. The regular name uses underscores like this, and the unlocalized name uses no underscores, rather it uses capitalized letters and just a different casing. So just keep that in mind. Of course, for a gemstone, that won't matter. Now that our item's been registered, we can head to the render item class. This will tell Minecraft to actually put it in the GUIs and make it not null. Let's scroll down in this render item class until we see all of the different items being registered. For this, it doesn't really matter where you put your new items, but I'd always recommend separating them from the rest by putting them at the very bottom. For this, we're doing this dot register item. And for this, we're doing items dot gemstone, comma, and then gemstone, not the unlocalized name, but the regular name using underscores. We haven't actually created our gemstone items, 
So let's do that now. In our items class, let's scroll down to the very bottom of all these all these registered items and make a new public static item named gemstone. Let's scroll down to all of the variable fillers and at the bottom let's also do gemstone equals get registered item gemstone using the same underscores regular name of the item. Finally, technically your item will work now. If you want it to have a good looking name and not just item.gemstone, right click your shift again and type in en underscore us. Anything you add to the enus.lang will update for all languages, so it's a bit confusing, but if you want your client to work across multiple languages, you'll have to also go to, for example, enau and then just change whatever you want in here but if your name your item name is going to be fine then you can do the same thing and just enus to add in your item name simply type item dot and then whatever its name was so for example gemstone dot name equals gemstone now we've added our gemstone in all the places it needs and let's just go back to compiling for this, head back to our workspace folder and run both compile.js because we've actually edited some code here and EPK because we've edited both the texture, the model file, and the language file. All right, now that both our JavaScript and assets are finished compiling, we can make our offline download again and test out our game. Again, the offline download and all our finished files are located in our JavaScript folder. Now that we're loaded back into my cool client, let's head into single player, make a new world in creative, of course, and let's just wait for this to load. Now that we're in our eagerly craft world, let's open up our inventory, head over to our materials tab, scroll down, and there it is, our lovely gemstone. Of course, it does nothing yet, but it functions as a regular item. We can drop it, we can do stuff with it, and that's about it. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a block of gemstone. First things first, to add our new block, we're gonna go to our resources folder again, to our desktop runtime, resources, assets, Minecraft, and textures, but this time we're gonna go to blocks, of course. We're gonna paste in our gemstone block texture, and let's head back to the Minecraft folder. We're now going to add all of our models, which for blocks, there are surprisingly a lot of. If you're not going to be using the script I'm about to provide, you're going to need to copy one from item that's already a block, one from block that's already a block, and also in block states, you're going to want to find another block, whatever it is, and copy that, and then edit all of the files to link up to each other with your texture. This is pretty easy, but I've given four scripts to the Eagler modding community that you can find in our Discord that'll generate all of this for you. For this, we're just gonna make a regular block, open that script up, and it's gonna be called the gemstone block. If you wanna see what these files look like, of course, if you're not using the script, or if you're on Linux, as our scripts for Linux is still in beta, you can see that this one, is in models item this one is in models block and this one is in minecraft block states you can of course add these on your own and that's fine but the script just helps a lot especially with harder blocks to create such as column blocks now that we're done with that let's head back into the code for this you're going to need to add one block through net.minecraft.block and blocks through net minecraft init 
as well as all of the three items. So for this, let's start out with blocks, scrolling all the way down to the bottom, and adding in a public static block named gemstone block. Then let's scroll down and add in our block to the bottom here. So gemstone block equals get registered block gemstone block. Of course, we haven't actually registered our block yet, so that's when we go to the block tab. Down here, but specifically, I'm going to search for the iron block. Let's copy all of this. And scroll down to the very bottom of our block registering and paste in another. Let's continue the IDs, so the next one is 198. And change all of this to gemstone block. And of course, our unlocalized name is going to be block gemstone. That the map color is red color. And other than that, we can keep everything the same. Of course, if you want to edit the sound type, material, or tab, you can do all of that fine. Now let's add it into our items. For our items, it's much easier as we can just go register item block in our item.java. And for this, we just do blocks gemstone just like that then for render item we just do this dot register block blocks dot gemstone block as gemstone block gemstone underscore block next we actually don't need to do anything on our items class as we already added it to our blocks class and items.java is only for items next let's go to our our lang file and for blocks it's a bit different it is tile dot block gemstone dot name equals block of gemstone minecraft for some reason, Minecraft decides to call them tiles and use this system for the block gemstone unlocalized names for all of the language. It's kind of weird, but we just gotta use it. Let's head back and compile our EPK and JavaScript again, and then we should be done. Okay, again, now that we are done with our compiling, you should know what to do now. Let's make our offline download. Let's get back into our world. Got a lot of friends that I can't escape. Sleeping in my head like a motel six. Hold it all together with a little duct tape. It bends, it breaks. Now that we're back in our game, we can check our tab and look around. Boom! There it is, our block of gemstone. We now have our regular gemstones and our blocks of gemstone which is super cool. With that, I hope you enjoyed this video on how to add both blocks and items into EagleCraft. Um, and there'll be more to come on different things like stairs and slabs, adding your own custom features and buttons to it, and all sorts of stuff like that. So I hope you're excited. I hope you enjoyed and see you next time. I look perfect on the surface, but a nightmare underneath. I've got anger problems, I say things that I don't mean. Some people pay for therapy, I find it in the sheets. Catch my breath, not even for a second.